Right now, live at 5, all eyes are on Georgia's runoff election as the outlook of Congress hangs in the ballot. As Minnesota state legislative session begins, we hear from both parties about what to expect. Plus, Wisconsin's legislature is ready to move on a COVID relief bill, what residents in the Badger State should expect. And later... During a time of need, a Northland radio station steps up and helps. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Welcome to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look at a press conference happening in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where this afternoon we learned officers involved in the shooting of Jacob Blake will not be charged. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Kristen Bakke. The Wisconsin city of Kenosha is bracing for violence tonight after prosecutors decided not to charge the officers who shot and paralyzed a black man in August. Officers shot Jacob Blake while responding to a call. Today, the Kenosha County District Attorney broke down his reason for not filing charges. The DA said Blake put a child in a car that was not his and was planning to leave. He says there was a felony domestic assault warrant out for Blake's arrest. The DA says the officers tased Blake three times and Blake was armed with a knife. He says Blake moved to stab an officer when they opened fire and shot him seven times. The DA says he made his decision after an exhaustive review. No Kenosha law enforcement officer in this case will be charged with any criminal offense based on the facts and the laws. The DA says Blake won't be charged either. Civil rights attorneys and attorneys for Blake released a statement saying they're disappointed by the decision. They say today's decision failed Blake and the community who demanded justice. They also say it sends the wrong message to police that it's okay to abuse their power. His representatives have said Blake was trying to protect his kids when he was shot. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers mobilized the National Guard ahead of today's decision, prepared for possible protests tonight. Meanwhile, the Illinois teen who killed two people and injured a third during protests in Wisconsin over the summer pleaded not guilty today. 18-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse faces a number of charges, including first-degree intentional homicide. He pled not guilty to all of them. Rittenhouse traveled to Kenosha in August during protests against the police shooting of Jacob Blake. He shot and killed two men and severely injured a third. He's out on $2 million bail, mostly raised through donations from people who called his actions patriotic. A session unlike any other is now underway at the Minnesota State Capitol. Handling the COVID-19 pandemic is still top of mind for everyone as lawmakers began meeting today to set next year's budget. CBS 3's Emma Quinn heard from both parties about their goals. As the Minnesota State Legislative Session started Tuesday morning, state senators and representatives from both parties say step one is getting the budget set. District 5 State Senator Justin Eichhorn, a Republican representing the Grand Rapids and Bemidji area, says in the summer they were told to expect a budget deficit, but says they'll know more in February. He does expect some disagreements over where budgeting should be spent. Eichhorn says his goals this session are continuing to provide more support for businesses and people impacted by COVID-19. The state needs to step up and help some of those small businesses they shut down. So that's one thing that I would like to see. We did have a package before, but I think there's probably more relief that's needed. Meanwhile, House Speaker Melissa Hortman, a DFLer representing the Twin Cities suburb, says focusing on helping those impacted by the pandemic is a main concern. She also hopes to better meet the needs of students all across the state. We know we have some of the worst opportunity gaps in the United States of America, and we are very committed to doing something about that. You cannot do that entirely free. Those we heard from today say they are working towards creating more bipartisan bills and working with the newly elected members of the state House and Senate. One topic of conversation the state legislature will be looking at is the future of Governor Tim Walz's emergency powers, which allow him to issue special rulings during the pandemic. All right, thanks, Emma. The November election kept the Democrats in control of the House and Republicans in control of the Senate. The regular session will run for 120 days. The House is meeting virtually for now, while the Senate will hold hybrid meetings. Looking ahead, tomorrow Governor Tim Walz is expected to announce loosened restrictions on indoor dining in Minnesota. 
A spokesman said the governor will make the move Wednesday as the state's coronavirus numbers have improved in recent weeks. It also comes as restaurant and bar owners have increasingly pushed back on measures that have inched some to the edge of survival. Walls has gradually relaxed virus restrictions, including getting elementary students back into school, reopening fitness centers, and restarting youth sports. The governor is set to discuss the restrictions at 2 o'clock tomorrow. We will stream the address live on air and at cbs3duluth.com. In Wisconsin, Republicans are moving ahead with a fast-tracked coronavirus response bill. The bill is opposed by Democrats and appears likely to be vetoed by Governor Tony Evers. The Assembly Health Committee plans to vote on the bill after a hearing today, when the public will have its first chance to weigh in. If it passes, the GOP-controlled Senate could also approve it, sending the bill to Governor Evers. Republicans and the governor have been unable to agree on COVID-19 response measures since the legislature last passed a bill nine months ago. Washington is bracing for, capital, for a Capitol Hill showdown Wednesday. That's when Congress meets to count electoral college votes. The president is increasing the pressure on one of his closest allies to assist planned challenges to the vote count. But those efforts are not expected to overturn President-elect Biden's win. Natalie Brand is at the White House with more on what to expect. Protesters have already begun to gather in Washington, D.C., ahead of Wednesday's count of Electoral College votes on Capitol Hill. Vice President Mike Pence paid a visit to the White House Tuesday as President Trump increases pressure on him to reject electors from several states, a power that vice presidents do not possess. I hope Mike Pence comes through for us, I have to tell you. Of course, if he doesn't come through, I won't like him quite as much. The vice president will preside over the largely ceremonial vote count during which dozens of House Republicans and at least 13 GOP senators say they will object. According to the rules, an objection would have to be raised by a lawmaker from both the House and the Senate. The chambers would then have to split up, debate up to two hours, and then vote on the challenge. The Democratic-controlled House is expected to vote down the challenges, and several Senate Republicans have also spoken out strongly against the objection. One of the latest, Oklahoma Senator James Inhofe, who said in a statement, to challenge a state's certification, given how specific the Constitution is, would be a violation of my oath of office. Wednesday's expected congressional clash comes exactly two weeks before Inauguration Day. Meanwhile, Georgia voters have begun casting their ballots to determine which party will control the Senate. The results will have huge implications on President-elect Joe Biden's ability to pass his legislative agenda on matters such as the pandemic and health care. Democrat John Ossoff is facing David Perdue, while Raphael Warnock is challenging Republican Senator Kelly Loeffler and trying to become the state's first black senator. Ossoff and Warnock need to win both races for a 50-50 Senate in which Vice President-elect Kamala Harris would cast the tie-breaking vote. Well, Dave's here for a first look at the weather. Dave, I got out for a nice long walk today. It was a beautiful blue sky morning. Yeah, it became sunnier than I expected. I thought we'd be partly sunny. We were mostly sunny. And, of course, that led to more sunshine, warmer temperatures, and a little bit of snow melt, which juiced up the atmosphere, which now may come back to bite us by tomorrow morning, could create some fog around the area. Dense fog advisory then later tonight through about 9 o'clock tomorrow morning for Minnesota and Wisconsin. Looks like the UP is off the hook. Tomorrow morning's commute, you're going to have to drive cautiously. And then... We do have a pair of low-pressure systems from the west easing our way, but with weak high pressure and control to our south, you know, we may not get any precip from the lows, but we're going to get the clouds. So it'll be mostly cloudy to overcast aloft and foggy at the surface. Our day planner for Wednesday says to give yourself extra time as you travel. Visibility is going to be fairly poor, but the warm spell continues. High temp 28 degrees, a good 10 degrees warmer than normal. We'll talk about how long this trend is going to last and if the sun will ever pop out again coming up in a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. Still to come on Live at 5, a friendly competition for the best snowman in town, plus some help for businesses struggling because of the pandemic. City by City is up next. You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Vaki, Anthony Matt, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS3. 
for coverage that matters most to you. Tune to CBS3. Arrowhead Supply is your local professional source for kitchen, bath, and countertops since 1973. Whether you're planning to remodel or build new, Arrowhead Supply has a wide range of styles and finishes to choose from. We custom fabricate laminate, quartz, granite, or Corian countertops on site and provide top installation. View all of the new colors, materials, and wood available and receive help from our knowledgeable staff at our Lincoln Park showroom. Arrowhead Supply. Visit us today. Free in-home estimates available. Did you know that 178 million Americans are missing at least one tooth? It's, it's true. true. That's why at Affordable Dentures and Implants, we only focus on tooth replacement solutions. Whether it's a single tooth, full dentures, or dental implants, we have an experienced dentist who can create a new smile just for you. At a price that's affordable. Because at Affordable Dentures and Implants, we want you to go, go ahead, ahead and, and smile. smile. The Cetus Fogger disinfectant machine sanitizes and restricts the growth of bacteria and viruses. Our disinfectant machines are needed wherever infection can be spread, such as hospitals, public spaces, schools, and nursing homes. The R model is stationary, ideal for the home, office, and classroom, while the C model is movable and ideal for commercial and industrial settings. Our disinfectant machine also controls mold, pests, and odors, ideal for the food and agriculture industries. Visit www.cetusonline.com. That is C-E-T-U-S online.com. The Center for Muscle and Joint Therapy has been providing physical therapy services to the Superior Duluth area for over 25 years. We work closely with your doctor for coordinated care and recovery in a comfortable environment. Individualized care designed for your needs, abilities, and healing progression. Where you want to be treated is up to you. Choose Center for Muscle and Joint Therapy. Experienced. Trusted. The Center for Muscle and Joint Therapy. It's your right. It's your choice. They're live, they're local. Watch the CBS3 News with Kristen Bakke and Anthony Matt tonight at 6, right after the CBS Evening News at 5.30. Welcome back to the CBS3 News, live at 5 on this beautiful Tuesday. Look at that view there. Here's a live look from Spirit Mountain, where it appears the snowpack on the hill is pretty good. Dave will have your full forecast in a few minutes, but first, let's see what's happening in your neighborhood. Do you want to build a snowman? Now that song will be stuck in my head. Well, there's a new competition in Hibbing for those who do. Plus, a Wisconsin community is looking for folks to help out on the ambulance crew. That and more as we take you around the Northland, city by city. As we head into the new year, the city of Silver Bay is making sure businesses know about a low-interest loan program known as the COVID-19 Taconite Community Relief Loan Program. It's a collaboration with the city of Silver, Silver Bay through its Economic Development Authority and in cooperation with the IRRB. Priority will be given to small businesses. Program guidelines and application can be found on our website or by contacting City Hall. Make sure to submit your application today before the funds are gone. Now to Hibbing, where they're building up the fun in the form of a snowman. You can now enter the Hibbing Winter Frolic Snowman Contest. From now until February 27th, boys and girls under 18 years of age can upload a picture of your snowman with permission from mom and dad, of course. At the end of February, organizers will determine the winner by the number of likes on Facebook. Two winners will receive a $25 gift card to a local business. Good luck to all the snowman makers out there. And we'll finish off in Bayfield, where the community is looking for those who are interested to join their ambulance service. Whether you want to be an EMT or a driver, there are opportunities available in the Bayfield community. Besides the satisfaction of helping your neighbors, the ambulance service provides other benefits, like a retirement package and compensation for responding to emergencies. There is an online application and more information on our website if you'd like to check it out. If there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, make sure to send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland city by city. Still to come on Live at Vibe, starting off the new year with a different kind of buzz. Why experts say a no alcohol challenge could prove more difficult than in years past. Record low temperature for this date is 30 do below from 1912. And 100 years later, 2012 record high set at 48. Today we made it to 33, which is warmer than normal. And that's a trend that likely will continue for much of the next seven-day period. We'll talk about if it's going to be all of that period coming up after our break.
There are a lot of choices when it comes to automotive care, but how can you find someone you trust? At East End Auto, our customers have trusted us for the past 20 years to provide them with the best auto care. As your area's full-service repair shop, with the most modern equipment available to us, and backed by a two-year, 24,000-mile nationwide warranty, honesty is what our customer relationships are built upon. Locally family-owned and operated, stop out to see why East End Auto is the community's trusted auto repair home. New name, same great service. Auto Care Collision Center has joined the Car Star family, and we're ready to serve the Northland. Call Car Star Auto Care Collision for your auto body repair needs. Whatever your water worry, Culligan Water can help. With over 40 filtration systems, including the world's best softener, no one filters more than Culligan Water, the only water that comes with a van. Contact Culligan, the local water experts. Here are some quick tips for a safer shopping experience. Though reusable bags are great for the environment, they can be a carrier for bacteria. Before shopping, please wash all bags. Try to keep six feet or two shopping carts of distance between you and other shoppers. Plan ahead so your trip can be quick and efficient. Though cash is accepted at most businesses, cash can transfer bacteria. When possible, try to use cards to lessen the risk of spreading illness. With your help, we can keep our neighbors healthy and workers safe. They're live, they're local. Watch the CBS3 News with Kristen Bakke and Anthony Mack. Tonight at 6, right after the CBS Evening News at 5.30. On Duluth Casino, open 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. daily. All non-smoking. During a time of need, a Northland radio station steps up and helps. Warmer temperatures today could lead to some fog tomorrow. We'll talk about a dense fog advisory tonight at 10. Severe weather hits. Tune to CBS 3 for up to date coverage morning and night. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Higher pressure made for a fairly beautiful day today, a little sunnier than I expected. And thanks to the sunshine, it got a little bit warmer, melted a little bit of snow, put some moisture in the air, and helped create a little bit of dense fog over Upper Eau Claire Lake, according to this picture from Eric Neff. So we get ice fog today, but straight up dense fog tomorrow as that moisture really condenses at the surface. Yeah, dense fog advisory for just about everybody except the UP through 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. So do travel cautiously later on tonight and through tomorrow. Here's another live look at what's going on in Ashland right now, and it's fairly calm there, but after a sunnier day, clouds are starting to creep back in aloft as the dense fog starts to get ready to settle down at the surface. So after today's sun, we may not see it again for a while. It's going to be more cloudy than anything else. Current conditions from Duluth International say the temperature is 26 degrees. Our relative humidity 75% with a calm wind. That always aids in a Betts fog formation. 30.19 inches of mercury is the air pressure, 1,022 millibars. And so for the time being, it is on the higher side. And as I look out our highly calibrated weather window here on the side of the studio, as George Kessler used to put it, it's still on the clearer side here in Duluth. But again, keep in mind, clouds will be advancing as the night goes on. And temperatures will be decreasing a little bit, but not so bad because of the cloud cover. At this hour, though, we have mid-20s for the Upper Peninsula, mid-20s as well for much of northern Wisconsin, and anywhere from upper teens to mid-20s in northern Minnesota. A little bit warmer by the lake, of course. Again, with cloud cover increasing, the temperature decrease overnight that naturally occurs will be tempered a little bit, and so it won't be bitterly cold by tomorrow morning. And tomorrow afternoon's high temps will be warmer than normal once again. So our Doppler map right now shows that the clouds are increasing from the west after higher pressure brought a sunnier sky today. And that's because we have a pair of low pressure systems out towards our west connected with an occluded front. But there's also high pressure in the middle part of the country, well down to our south, so it won't clear our sky. But it will hamper the progression of these low pressure systems. And by splitting the difference, then I think we're going to be dry for the next several days, but cloudy. So dry like a high, but cloudy like a low, and no precip. Not many precip chances this week. Sure, we may get some freezing fog tomorrow with that dense fog advisor we have to watch out for, but a snow chance? Very late this weekend to Saturday. Still looks like a 30% chance for some very light snows, an inch maybe, as these pair of low pressure systems continue their march off towards the east. Now, let's march into Minnesota's forecast here for tonight, and the low temps will go from Maybe 13 near Ely to as warm as 20 by Lake Superior. Cloudy and foggy for Minnesota. For Wisconsin, too. 
and cloudy for Michigan, even though the fog may not be there. Low temps will be in the teens in that part of our world. And then for tomorrow, warmer than normal again with highs near 30. Overcast sky for Wisconsin and Michigan. Overcast in Minnesota as well with highs from 27 to about 30 degrees. And yeah, that's the trend here. Warmer than normal in the 20s to about 30 for the rest of the week. Cloudier sky builds in and sticks around, Kristen. We're on the cloudy but dry side through Friday. Then there's that 30% chance for the light snow on Saturday, followed by perhaps partial sunshine Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. The most sun we'll see in a while. We'll enjoy it while we have it. Thanks, Dave. The start of a new year brings new resolutions for many of us, and each year more people are choosing to go alcohol-free for a month. Nancy Chen shows us how this year's dry January challenge comes as alcohol use has increased during the pandemic. After welcoming a new year, many people are now saying goodbye to alcohol for the dry January challenge. That includes Douglas Waters, who has a good reason. The Manhattan business owner just opened the alcohol-free bottle shop Spirited Away in November. I had increased my drinking and a lot of people had. In response to that, I wanted to create a place for people who wanted to maybe rein that in a little bit and say, you know, I actually don't want to be drinking as much as I am. Drinks like these are helping more people than ever stick to their pledge for a dry January. This year's dry January challenge comes as alcohol use has surged during the pandemic. People are feeling more stress and many are having a drink to mark the end of the workday at home. Research from the Rand Corporation released this fall found Americans were drinking 14 percent more in 2020 compared to the previous year and heavy drinking among women for this study considered four or more drinks within two hours rose 41 percent. So working from home has its obstacles on its own, but certainly when the bar is at home, there is less of an obstacle to find a drink. Hillary Scheinbaum is the author of The Dry Challenge and says dry January can be for anyone. There are so many benefits involved with doing a dry January, including clearer skin, better sleep, better digestion, and just an elevated mood since alcohol is depressive. A path to a healthier new year and a different kind of buzz. Scheinbaum recommends finding a friend to complete the challenge with, as well as making alcohol less visible at home. Still to come, parenting can be scary, but one local event is hoping to ease the burden on new moms. Home Furniture's New Year sale continues with up to an extra 10% off sale prices, plus zero down, 0% interest financing on any purchase until 2022, and free no contact shipping. 10% off during the New Year sale, only at Home Furniture. Don't let the weather ruin your day. Covered by a winter storm watch. Dave Anderson, Caitlin Moffin, and Peter Kavikowskis. The CBS3 weather team. Tracking more than just severe storms. Dave Everything in its path. When it threatens our communities, we respond. We bring the fight to the front line. The Army National Guard stands ready because sometimes the front lines are in our own backyard. We will always be there when our community needs us the most. Find out more about serving your community part time by visiting NationalGuard.com. Mining. It's a part of Minnesota's history that affects everyone in the Northland still to this day. From environmental issues to economics and so much more. Join me, Kristen Bakke, every Tuesday for Eye on Mining. A fair and unbiased report that answers the tough questions surrounding the world of mining. Eye on Mining with Kristen Bakke. Tuesdays at 10 only on live local CBS3. Brought to you by Iron Mining Association. 
It is the question that matters the most. ¿Dónde está? That takes you behind the story. Robert. It drives everything we do. It is the foundation of trust. Who did all of this? And the truth that propels us forward. What did you make of that? It is the question. One word, three letters long. And without it, our purpose. That's news. And our freedom fade. This is why. Everything that happens on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of news, no matter what happens in news, weather is always constant, weather is always changing as well, so it's still an important role as the meteorologist to kind of still stay grounded and to kind of just know that role and what to take and kind of just make sure you're delivering what's the most important for your viewers, but then also I like to touch base on the national things. All of those news stories also tie in with weather stories because they do go kind of hand in hand. Watch Jenna and Caitlin in the morning at 5 and 6 a.m. During Home's New Year's sale at Sleep Express, get 0% interest financing on any Tempur-Pedic mattress for six years. Plus, Home will give you a bonus $300 shopping card, free delivery, setup, and a 120-day comfort guarantee. Home's New Year's sale at Sleep Express. Welcome to the Kelly Clarkson Show! Bringing a new baby into the world is tough enough. It's become even harder during the pandemic. The Duluth community is coming together for mothers in need. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez tells us how your donations could help the Northland's pregnancy care centers in a big way. The need continues to be strong. Star of the North Maternity Home, an organization that connects women who are pregnant and homeless with shelter and resources, had a busy year. We've had over 63 applicants in the 18 months that we've been open. Board chair of the facility, Sue McLernan, says they've been able to serve 11 mothers and their babies. The pandemic keeping the numbers consistent. We did see a little uptick, I would say April through October, especially with, you know, shelters closing. McLernan says as the need for help remains high, they're thankful for Life 97.3 and St. Luke's Hospital as they gear up to throw the third annual Northland's largest baby shower. Office coordinator and 97.3 on-air host Jill Mickelson says in years past, they've had such great success. We saw over 2,000 diapers come in, 100 onesies, $250 in gift cards. They're hoping for the same outcome for this trying year. Now, if you have found out that you're having a baby, maybe even for the first time, those needs in a pandemic just seem to be amplified even more. They're looking for donations of diapers, clothes, toys, or even gift cards, which will be given to over five pregnancy care centers across the area. So us being able to make sure they're fully stocked is how we can support them. Okay, so you guys are, are gathering. You'll be able to donate until the end of January. For drop-off locations, head on over to our website. We'll be right back after the break. Change the future of medicine from the convenience of home. Join the All of Us Research Program to help improve health research and speed up medical breakthroughs. Visit EssentiaHealth.org slash All of Us to learn more. The COVID-19 pandemic is the worst health care crisis of our lifetime. Hospitals, care centers, and their staff are overwhelmed, and it's getting worse. By now, we all know someone who's been affected by the virus. But there is hope. Vaccines are coming and getting closer every day. But while we wait for relief, you need to do your part. Wear a mask, wash your hands, and maintain your distance. It's for now, not forever. Mining. It's a part of Minnesota's history that affects everyone in the Northland still to this day. Watch Eye on Mining with Kristen Bucky every Tuesday at 10. Brought to you by Iron Mining Association, Range Regional Airport, and Miners National Bank of Evelyn. Only on live local CBS3. here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. 
Plus, subscribe to The Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Men's wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions for Men. Celebrating 30 years in business in 2021 with 30% off storewide. Downtown Duluth. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Canal Park on this Tuesday evening. Let's take a look back at some of today's top stories and we'll see what's coming up tonight at 6. The Kenosha County District Attorney today announced that there will be no char uh, criminal charges filed against any of the officers in the Jacob Blake case. Blake, who is black, was left paralyzed after being shot seven times in the back on August 23rd by a Kenosha police officer who had responded to a call at the scene. At the request of local authorities, Governor Tony Evers has called up the Wisconsin National Guard to Kenosha ahead of the release of a charging decision in the Jacob Blake case. And tonight at 6, gun dealers say the spike in demand for guns and ammunition driven by the coronavirus pandemic has not subsided in Wisconsin. And dealers say they can't keep their shelves stocked. That's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is next. We'll see you right back here at 6.